How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Peter Stout, otherwise known as Outlaw Dota, and today we're going to be taking a look at a Crusader 3 Invoker player who wants to learn Quas Exhort Invoker. If you want to get your own coaching session, be sure to hit me up on Discord, and I can hook you up with a quality coaching session just like this. So I have like 600 games with Invoker, and it took me literally like at least 100 games of just playing him and failing miserably to feel like comfortable with him at all. And until you have all of the spells down on muscle memory, like instant muscle memory, it becomes very, very hard to play your macro game well while you're trying to worry about how to cast your spells. So when you're learning to play Invoker, your skill level is gonna drop like 500 MR at least. So if you don't wanna lose MMR, don't practice heroes like Invoker and Rank. Um, it's just so hard to keep track of the spells and the macro game at the same time. So that's what I would say at a first level. The second thing I wanna say is that Quas Exhort is really greedy. It doesn't have a lot of impact early. Like, I mean, literally all you have is Cold Snap, Forge Spirits, and Sunstrike to do damage with for a good chunk of the game. I mean, you can get a value point in Wex, but it can be very dangerous. So I wouldn't suggest going Quas Exhort if you're playing against or playing with like a Medusa or an Anti-Mage or some carry that takes like forever to come online. You're gonna wanna try to make space for your carry. So that's what I would say about Quas Exhort. Quas Wex, the play style is pretty different as far as like laning and approach to the game goes, but you're basically just focusing on building urn, boots of speed, and just spamming the enemy mid out of lane by burning all their mana, then ganking somewhere else, and just kind of snowballing the game with earning Cold Snap. Quas Exhort is a much greedier and more patient playstyle. So, like, you have to be patient playing Quas Exhort. Like, if you're playing greedy and the game is going poorly, you can't just throw your body in and feed in horrible situations. You have to split the map and farm and get your items. That's kind of the problem with Quas Exhort Invoker. Um, also, if you don't have any stuns on your team, he's very unreliable early game. So, it... All that to say, it's a very hit or miss type of playstyle Quas Exhort is. Um, I would say overall Quas Exhort does probably way worse against most mids of the patch because think about like the ability to burn mana with Quas Wex is so powerful against um, Tinker, Lena, Batrider, Leshrac, um, all these heroes. Whereas Quas Exhort, like I feel like a lot of the mids right now have counterplays to Quas Exhort. So that's just my two cents. You're against the Queen of Pain middle, so if she's smart, she'll max dagger and your life will be like literal hell. Look at the game right now. I'm just comparing teams. Their team is very jump heavy, right? Like they want to jump you with Hoodwink, Lion. I mean, they're all jump. Hoodwink, Lion, Queen of Pain, Faces Void, Anti-Mage. They all want to jump on somebody and blow them up. Um, so your goal this game is just to survive their jump. You don't want to get caught in their jump. You don't want to get caught by Hoodwink or Lion or Anti-Mage Faces. So now looking at your team, you're very low on lockdown which is very hard for Invoker, especially if you're going Quas Exhort. Like, you have Tree Ulti and Tusk, which is, the, like, that's about it as far as your lockdown goes. Looking at their team, you're going to have a really hard time comboing anyone. Queen of Pain can blink away. Faces Void can undo a lot of the damage. Um, Anti-Mage can blink away. So I would be looking to build something like an Orchid. I'd probably go, um, depending on how lane went, I would probably rush an Orchid because... If you can get a fast Orchid and kind of start chasing anti-mage and faces around the map and killing them, then you could have some serious impact on the game. Otherwise, you're lacking a lot of lockdown, which is very rough for your team comp, or which is very rough for invokers. So I think this is like a must-have Orchid game. Um, and then you got to start making space early and like try to put some pressure on the map. So that's like play style approach for invoker. Like this is just a bad invoker game. I don't think you can play really greedy um, and just go like Midas bots normal items i think you need to get an orchid fast and try to make shit happen and then you can go back for minus after or something like that but um that's like macro game stuff there's a lot of micro stuff with invoker that i'll try to touch on but there's so much like I, it's hard to touch on it in one video good job securing the creep there um yep aggro back which is good you're right clicking the co-op more than i would expect which is good in periods like this, where... Let's see, where did he hit level 2? So you're already level 2. I can't see which orbs you have. The replay is bugging out. I can't tell what orbs you have right now, but it looked like you had Exhort, Exhort, Exhort going all the way back under the tower. And once as soon as you hit level 2, if you're not hitting creeps, you need to be constantly switching between full Quas and Exhort. So last hitting is Exhort, healing is Quas, and you're like switching back and forth constantly. You hit level 2... I would get the Sunstrike out of your hotbar. Like, um, as soon as you get level 2, my 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 spells are uh, Forge Spirits and Cold Snap. And you need to be, like, playing up on the co-op. Like, 
Um, Force Spirits reduce armor. Cold Snap and Force Spirits is very, very difficult to deal with. So, you know, as soon as you get level 2, I'd be some... Like, right now, if you had a Forge Spirit harassing her, she'd be, like, 200 health lower. She's trading with you uphill. She needs to be trading into a Forge Spirit as well. Like, and you need to be thinking in lane. Like, you're using Cold Snap uh, whenever they're standing in a creep wave, whenever they're trading uphill with you, um, or whenever they're diving your tower. Those are the three main, like, I'm cold snapping them right now uh, scenarios. I'd probably get a stick and a raindrop and start going for either my Midas or my Orchid. Lane is super free for you right now. It should not be this free. Uh, you could definitely get away with going a Midas and then I go Orchid right after. You'll notice when, when Quinn plays mid, he prioritizes the hero, the enemy hero over creeps. Like, don't let her sit here like this doing this. You need to make her run. Like, she's up too far in my opinion. Like, summon Forge Spirit and start hitting her, like, way earlier than you did. If you start harassing her, right, then she'll harass you back. The creeps will aggro onto her. Then this creep won't be contested anymore. And you'll basically just chip all of her health away. You'll have more health. She'll have, like, no health. And then you get the creep for free and you harass the fuck out of her. Um, you definitely need to stick her a raindrop as well. Like, you're against the Queen of Pain. Um, pretty standard of Quasi Zord Invoker. Um, she used Blink, so yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, she's gonna get away, isn't she? Nice Sunstrike, man. So, like, that was good. Um, I'm glad that you went after she blinked aggressively. That was a misplay by her, so that was good, great that you punished that. But yeah, your minimap awareness is there when you're looking for Sunstrikes, but as far as, like, other things that could affect you in the game, it's definitely not there when you're playing Invoker. Uh, when you're new to playing Invoker, which is really hard, right? Like, you were totally oblivious to that Hoodwink. Um, I saw that she was missing, you know, and I was like, oh, shit. So, there, there's, there's a, a bunch of, like, small inefficiencies as far as, like, which... Spells you have invoked. So if you're running back to this fight, these are not the spells you want to have. Like, you're not going to use Ghost Walk to get there. And they're all at full health. Like, the odds that you need Sunstrike in the next, like, 25 seconds are very low. I would be prepping um, the Cold Snap Tornado combo. And the reason I say that is because, like, I know they're going to chase your Jug this way into the river, right? You know, if you're prepping your spells properly ahead of time, you can actually contribute when you get to this fight. Um, instead, though, Quap does blink forward aggressively. Like, if you had the correct spells invoked right now, um, cold snap, tornado, meatball, um, she'd be dead, like, 100% dead. You just cold snap, tornado, then drop the meatball almost immediately after, you just delay, like, a little bit. Um, she would've died. So, there's, like, inefficiencies as far as, like, when you're going back to lane, or, like, in, in the downtime, you're not really thinking ahead well of, like, what spells I'm gonna need to be using. Like, you weren't gonna need Sunstrike anytime soon in that situation. I'd be looking bot here. There's a lot going on bot, I would be checking it. I, maybe you're relying on the people in your party to call some strikes, but I, I wouldn't be relying entirely on that. I like that you're staying here, though, and pressuring this to punish Quap leaving. That was really good. Ahead of the 10-minute runes, right? Like, all, all you're supposed to do on Invoker, uh, take your Forge Spirits and send one this way and your hero that way, or vice versa, whichever you feel like is safer. And you can secure both runes that way. Uh, basically, every single rune you can secure, as long as you get your level 2 before the first uh, rune. Like, yeah, again, I, I wouldn't go Boots Travels here. I This isn't a game where you can greed. Like, you have a Huskar and a Juggernaut. Like, two super greedy cores, and then it's just not safe for you to split push lanes in this game. Like, you're against Hoodwink, Lion, Anti-Mage, Quap, Faceless. Like, it's so dangerous for you to split push lanes. I'd be rushing a fucking Orchid and then going and trying to help my team kill them, uh, bot, as much as possible as soon as I get it. It's actually really bad that you cold snapped her there. Um... So, if she goes bot, this is a fight that's already won for your team. This is a fucking waste of time for her. You let her go, then you take the tower immediately after. Like, you actually griefed yourself by cold snapping her here. Now she's going to sit in your wave and deep push, and it's just like... It's 11 minutes in the game, but you're treating it like it's still laning phase. Like, you should be shoving this wave hard as fuck. You need to have a TP and a smoke on you so that you can connect to side lanes if you do get the chance. Like, you could be more aggressive than you are uh, at all stages of the game, but you're just not, in my opinion. A, a lot of things. So, for one, like, after this Queen of Pain TP's in, you can't stay here. Like... Both their supports are missing. Um, they can either TP here or gank you. You're just in like a terrible spot. You can't stay here at this tower. Um, that's one thing. For two, you're not using Alacrity at all. Um, and you could be giving that to your Forge Spirits, then backing so that the tower takes more damage, right? So, again, after you respawn, you sit in base looking for Sunstrike for a while, but like, you need to be here. Like, just TP here, then do whatever you want to do as far as looking for Sunstrikes. But again, you're being really inefficient with your spells. Like, you're in base and you have Forge Spirit and Ice Wall invoked. Uh, right now, I'd have, like, Sunstrike and Tornado, because my plan would be, um, you know, I could potentially Sunstrike mid after I TP in, and then I would also have Tornado ready in case I get the chance to do a Cold Snap Meatball, or Cold Snap Tornado Meatball combo. So, like, see, right now, you have Sunstrike and Meatball. This is, this won't do shit. This won't do shit. And then you invoke Cold Snap after, um, and there's no chance you're getting a kill with this. But again, like, if you 
had a cold snap tornado meatball you could walk up to either these supports and like one shot them especially with your tree on behind you like he could walk up um ult them and then you know you could do some serious fucking damage with that combo but uh so yeah i, I like the patience that you had to wait for a good fight taking this um you just can't again you can't stay like just give alacrity to this guy um give alacrity to the catapult and back off if faces is missing you can't stay like this um you bought boots like you spent 2000 gold or whatever for boots of travels and you haven't done anything with it like not one thing you haven't pressured the map at all you haven't connected to a fight you tp mid with it that's it when you could have bought an orchid that would have like way more impact on this game or at least if you have boots of travels like just alacrity the catapult back off and then tp top and push this hard like that's that's the strength of boots of travels you can rat lanes like a freaking maniac yeah so you, you didn't have the right spells invoked you, like you could have killed that co-op easy you need to have uh when you're in situations like this, like after you use a spell, you need to move your next spell down as fast as possible. So like invoke cold snap again to move it down to the next slot and then invoke meatball. And then you'd have cold snap and meatball. Um, yeah, I don't know why you invoke deafening blast here. So if your trio has ulti, you, you don't like deafening blast is more of a setup, like a solo setup than it is like a damage spell, right? Like if your trio has ulti and he's sitting in the woods like this, you should have meatball invoked ready to go. Like if you had meatball invoked, you walked up here, you hit the co-op with it, she dies. But you didn't have any spells that like do anything invoked. But again, you're, you're fighting into Chrono on their side of the map when you have a Juggernaut and a Huskar and you could go Rosh at any time. You just cannot try to take this tier 2 ever in any game on either team, Dire or Radiant. You can never try to take this tier 2 without Rosh. Again, even though you didn't play Invoker as efficiently as you could have, if you made the call to go Rosh, you're already playing higher than your rank, you would have won this game, I guarantee it. If you're fighting a bunch like this, by the way, you need a wand. It's super invaluable. Your Midas is on off cooldown way too often. Tons of inefficiencies with the Midas usage. Um, like, it's still off cooldown. Oh, it hurts. Uh, it's pain. Again, just like as you're walking around, the spells you have invoked are not good. Like, if I'm pushing soul like this, I'm probably going to have, like, Tornado and Meatball invoked so that if somebody jumps me, I can Tornado to escape. Or I can Tornado Meatball set up, right? You know, it's late in the game. It's late enough in the game where you could do Tornado Meatball Deafening Blast. And then if you had an Orchid, you could kill anyone that came up here guaranteed. Um, but there, you're so inefficient while you're walking around with the spells that you have invoked. So, for one thing, if you're trying to dodge Chrono like this, good reaction speeds, but you should be blinking this way, not this way. Um, for two, yeah, yeah, yeah. Why... Like, why, why use everything on this guy? Like, he's a support. Like, you just need to back off and wait for the fight to develop more. Um, you don't have to commit everything on the first person you see. Like, you have to wait for the fight to develop more. You still have a Faces Void and Anti-Mage, and you don't know where they are. Um, so, you just need to be patient and let the fight develop. Good luck learning how to play Invoker. If you are going to learn how to play Invoker, I highly, strongly suggest you do it in Unranked or Turbo, because you just can't focus on things like positioning and macro map movements if you're so worried about how to cast the spells properly so anyway thanks again for watching i'll see you next time peace